Hello everyone. Thank you for watching my videos. I've been doing more research in this video. I'm going to come to a conclusion what's going to happen in the future. Just like um, Charles T. Russell did. But mine will come true when we will see what lies he told and what research that they had at that time. People were showing him the truth and he did not want to listen. We have the internet today. We can go anywhere around this world to find the truth about anything we want, any religion, anything about animals, fish in the sea, birds in the sky, insects, all these things we, we know we can go on the internet, we can find all this information. And sadly, there's people in their religion won't do research about could there be failures, could there be lies in my religion. I'm going to take everybody into the future, okay? When Christ comes, I don't know exactly how he's going to do it, but I'm just going to use my way of thinking, which I'll say I'm going to be 99% wrong and 1% right, okay? I'm going to admit that. Say Christ comes and he, he said, I want all religions on my left side and my sheep will be on the right side. So he started naming out Catholics on the left side, Mormons, Muslims, Latter-day Saints, and go, keep go, going all the way down. And I saw he said Jehovah Witnesses. And he looks at the Jehovah Witnesses, the governed body, and says, you are worse than the Bible students. You predicted the world more than they did. You predicted the world more than any religion. So that would make you the worst false prophet on this planet. Could any Jehovah Witness could honestly just look at Christ and say, you are a liar? Our governed body would not lie to us? Could you Really call Christ a liar? Job says, that's what you're doing. Every time when you don't search the truth, you're calling him a liar. This tarp and this open field is the way I was when I look at this picture and seeing the tarp of the watchtower's teaching, the books, the literature, and everything the watchtower has published. Till I started building up doubts and seeing things for myself that I could not get no answers, could not explain what's wrong, what I feel was wrong. So I started doing research and finding out the truth. One of the main truths was from this man. He got his information from Nelson Barber. Nelson Barber got it from his teacher, uh, William Miller, which they was called at that time, Miller Knight. Mennonites. 
and they've had his research. And since 1843, Christ didn't come. For William Mill, Miller, the, Nelson Barber predicted the Christ was going to come in 1874. And then later on, him and Charles T. Russell got together. Maybe there was something was wrong with the records. And they come across to make it 1914. I'm going to play something that I found in the archives of the Bible Students website. And I want you to hear Charles T. Russell's, it's not his words, but it's his writings. And you, I want you to hear the truth for yourself. Zionism's future assurance. Domination, reckoned on the basis suggested in the scriptures themselves, should be interpreted a day for a year, lunar time. Seven years in lunar time would represent 2,520 days, and these symbolically interpreted would mean 2,520 years from the time Nebuchadnezzar, the head of the image, was recognized down to the time of the expiration of the lease of Gentile power when the stone shall smite the image in the feet. So far as I have been able to determine, the year of Zedekiah's dethronement was six... He determined, not archaeologists, not Bible truth, his own opinion. So 6 B.C. Thus calculated, the 2,520 years of Gentile lease of power will expire in October 1914. There are some who claim that Zedekiah's dethronement should be dated B.C. 588. If this be true, it could make a difference of but 18 years and give the date 1932. My convictions, however, favor 1914. His, fa his favor, choosing 1914 over facts. Now, I'm going to play that one more time, and please anyone listen he had the facts from people who did research he ignored the facts because he knew 1932 was way beyond his reach of living so he wanted to come while he was still alive reckoned on the basis suggested in the scriptures themselves, should be interpreted a day for a year, lunar time. Seven years in lunar time would represent 2,520 days, and these symbolically interpreted would mean 2,520 years from the time Nebuchadnezzar, the head of the image, was recognized down to the time of the expiration of the lease of Gentile power when the stone shall smite the image in the feet. So far as I have been able to determine, the year of Zedekiah's dethronement was 606 B.C. Thus calculated, the 2,520 years of Gentile lease of power will expire in October 1914. There are some who claim that Zedekiah's dethronement should be dated B.C. 588. If this be true, it could make a difference of but 18 years and give the date 1932. My convictions, however, favor 1914. You hear from himself saying he favor 1914, favor 607. Okay, Charles T. Russell ignored people's research. Just like the Watchtower government body kicked people like me and others out because we did real research, just like some of the Bible students did, did at that time to show him 
607 was live. So let's use the, the internet. Who knows their own history, Jehovah Witnesses? The Jews. Ancient Jewish history, the temples. So let's see what it says here. The first temple, 10th century, when it was destroyed, 587. Uh, Babylon exile from 597 to 538. And the, after the exile, 538 to 332. When was the second temple built? 516. And when it was destroyed, 70 CE. So my question is, if I can do research like this and to go to the true source of the people that knows their own history and know all the facts, all the facts, everything prove Jerusalem fell in 587. So why is the watchtower having a man that favor his own opinion over facts was given to him at the time about Jerusalem was destroyed in 587 because he knew of his age 1932 might have been out of his reach and he would have lost many Bible students, admitted that he was wrong. Now remember now, God and Christ chose this man to be the truth of the future Jehovah Witnesses or the truth of the Bible students that are still Bible students. He favored his opinion than over facts and all that. He wasn't an archaeologist. He wasn't a scholar. He was just a man that got his information from two sources in front of him. People, that is why it's dangerous putting faith in men. Why would uh, Jerusalem were put down here the truth about the first, second temple when there was exile and lie about when the first temple was destroyed just to deceive people they would be deceived themselves they would be deceiving their own people The Jews want their history to be true. And they try and do their best to do it. That's the reason they did all their alcohol deads and everything and found out the things they found that when the first, first temple was destroyed. So, we put our faith in this guy and he's destroyed all our lives and you fell. That's the reason Jehovah says you will be destroyed because you put your faith in this ungodly man the, the, the Bible or Christ's words. Thank you and have a nice day.